Hey guys, it's Chris here bringing you guys another video this week. So, get into it real quick for you guys. This video is going to be all about zebra finch breeding. I've had tons of people asking kind of what my method of breeding zebra finches are. And so this is kind of going to be a, a zebra finch breeding 101 type video. So, going to give you guys the basics. And thankfully right now, I kind of have zebra finches in all phases. So I'm gonna kind of walk you through what I do when I set up my pairs, what I do to help them build their nest boxes, what I do to make sure that their eggs are fertile, what do I do to make sure the chicks that hatch, you know, survive, stay alive. I'm gonna show you banding. So there's gonna be a lot in this video. Uh, we'll try and keep it as short as we can, but I also wanna be able to help you guys out and show you some of the specifics and some of those details that you probably won't see in any other videos out there so we're gonna jump right on in there and i'm gonna show you five different pairs of zebra finches that i have paired up right now sorry four one two three four there we go four pairs um and kind of talk you through what we have here so we'll start here so this is a pair that i just set up today so both of these two were outside in the aviary. Um, I wasn't planning on breeding them quite yet, but they were showing me signs that they were ready to breed. They were trying to, you can see Mikey up there, he's in the nest box, he's just coming out. They were trying to, to build a nest in there and, and Mikey wasn't having it because that's his nest box. And so um, I decided I'd grab these guys, throw them in the cage. So my hand, She's a chestnut flank white. Let's see if we can get it to focus on them here. There we go. So she is one of my babies from last year, uh, uh, from my English pair. And so she's got some decent size to her. And then this male, I actually picked up when I bought my Java finches. Uh, he had some zebra finches out there in the flight and he actually just gave me the zebra finch. Uh, he's like, I don't know how old he is, but I'm going to give him to you. Um, and I really liked, he has, he's got really good uh, cheek markings. His flank markings are really nice, beautiful finch, light gray. Um, so I think he would be a, a perfect uh, bird that has great traits to, to breed him, try and breed him into the English gene. I like to get some English sized zebra finches that are black cheek because I have yet to see one of those. So around where I'm at. And he actually has pretty decent size. When, he's, when he jumps up there next to her, um, he's got pretty comparable size to her. I still think she's got a little bit to grow because she's young. Um, and probably within the next year, she'll probably grow a little bit bigger too. So. so we have these guys here. One of the signs that they were showing that they were ready to breed, um, they're kind of chasing each other around, not aggressively, but trying to be with each other. Um, and when they they'd make like these weird kind of meowing cat noises and base and it's mostly the male and then the female would kind of chime in a little bit and it was kind of their their mating call type deal and they do it a lot when they find a new nesting place and they want to build a nest in there and they kind of make these funny noises and it attracts the female she comes in looks at it and they start building a nest so that's a, a good sign to show or to to let you know that your zebra finches want to mate um if they're, if they're building a nest, obviously that's a sign that they want to make. Zebra finches are super easy to breed, guys. Um, there's not a whole lot of science to it. You put a nest box in there and you're going to have eggs. In fact, half the time, if you have a pair and you don't even have a nest box, you're most likely going to find some eggs in your, your food dish or on the bottom of the tray. So that's what we have with these guys. So I caught them and brought them in. And I actually was planning to put them on this top cage here. But my female, uh, Rosie Bork, is not feeling very good. It was really fluffed up, and so I brought her in today. I'm going to put some heat on her um, and try and help her get a little bit better. And so, so I kind of had to improvise, and I gave these guys this cage for now. So I kind of gave them the smaller end just because my zebra, or my English pair here, they have four chicks that are going to be fledging this week, this coming week. So I wanted to give them a little bit more space. And I think this will be temporary. Um, we'll kind of mix it around and if I can get these guys better, then I'll, I'll move that pair up there so they can all have their own individual cage. So, so I got them, caught them, I put them in here 
and I just put up a nest box. So I had a lot of people ask how I put my nest boxes up. If you can see here, I have a little hook. Get it to focus on there. So I have a little hook right here and that hook just screws into my nest box and then I can just hook it on to my cage like that. And so that's how we, that's how I hook, connect my nest boxes to these cages. It works really well and then you have the opening there and I have a, it's basically these, like these doors right here and these doors just open. So I open it, put the nest box in there and they're really, and that's what they're designed for. They're designed to put nest boxes here um, mostly canary nest boxes, that sort of thing, canary baskets, but I um, was able to improvise and make it work. And so I can show you the hooks that I use. I'll come down in here. We'll pull these out, let you guys get a good eye. And I just bought this at Walmart or Home Depot, just like that. So it screws into the nest box and then you hang the open hook onto the wire. So super simple. Um, I have used wicker baskets before the wicker baskets I had to put inside the cage on nesting options and materials. I'm not super fond of wicker baskets and you can see I have two right here. I haven't used these for a while. The only reason why I don't really like wicker baskets is I've had a lot of birds snag their toes on the wicker basket or babies and I've lost feet, legs, or have even had dead birds. And so I've tried to go away from the wicker baskets 100% just to eliminate that option for injury or that chance for injury for the birds. And so, so I like to use the wooden nest boxes. That's been something that all of my birds have accepted. They take, I like the, the closed or the small hole nest box, kind of like these ones. These are for the bigger birds, but I like the hole in the nest box. Those are the ones that I like to use. And you can see I have all wooden nest boxes here, wooden, wooden, and wooden. So um, nesting material. I've had a lot of people ask me what I use for nesting material. On zebra finches, honestly, you could put anything in there and they'll use it for a nest. Half the time they, they rip up my newspaper down here on the ground and try and use that for a nest. They pull on all these uh, leaves that I have, try and use that for a nest. So they are not picky at all. And I'll show you what I use for the nesting material. So first of all, I do, I have some paper towels here and I'll get the paper towels and I'll just rip them up into little pieces like this. And when my birds are first beginning to breed, so I just barely put this up today. So if I open it, you can see that I don't have anything in there. I'll take this and I'm gonna drop it in there. And then I usually hang a piece, try and see if you can see that. I try and hang a piece outside of the hole so that the birds can see that. And that kind of draws their curiosity and that brings them to that nest box. Now, the zebra finches have already discovered this nest box because they're ready to breed and they've already gone in and out. But you can see my male, see how curious he is now? I just put that in there. So that makes him more curious. He jumps up in the nest. He says, oh, there's a nest box. There's nesting material in there. And then they start getting excited and they start going in and out of that nest box wanting to breed. So super easy trick right there just to kind of bump up the curiosity of the birds. So I use shredded paper towel, which after they breed each time, I just empty out the nest box and let them build it again. So then I have down here. So I have some Bermuda grass and I just bought this off Amazon um, and they ship it in a really big bag. Birds really enjoy the Bermuda grass. It's a good underlying for the nest. And then probably my next go-to option is cocoa fiber. And usually what I'll do, cause this is, this is in really long strands, I'll just grab a chunk like this and then I get the scissors and I'll just cut it off. So I just put this little handful in there and they love that. So they'll do that. And then also I don't have any here to show you. Sometimes I'll go to like a fabric store or like Joann's or something like that, a quilting store. And they have like a lot of the little knickknacks. I'll buy feathers because they usually have feathers there. Um, I have some birds that really like the feathers, like my shaft tails, they love to use the feathers. And the feathers are kind of like the last, the last uh, nest lining that they use. And that, that's what they, lay down to put their eggs on because the feathers are soft, they're insulated, they help keep the chicks a little bit warmer and the eggs. And so 
feathers are a good option too. And I'm talking more about like the smaller feathers, not like the big long parrot tail feathers or wing feathers, kind of the smaller uh, inner like ch breast feathers, that sort of thing in the fluff. And so, so that's how we have. So that's, that's how we start our birds. So you catch them, make sure you have a pair, make sure they like each other. Put a nest box in there. I'll put some initial nesting material in there. And then probably tomorrow, I'll grab some of my Bermuda grass and my cocoa fiber, and I'm just gonna set it inside and they're gonna go to town on it. And we also have like, I also have these. These are nesting holders, uh, nesting material holders. And you just pop this end open right here. See if we can pop it open with one hand, see how talented we can be. There we go. Stuff all your nesting material in there, and then this part just hooks onto your to your cage wall, and then they can pull the nesting material out of the sides. So that's an option that you can use. I bought those at our pet store. Usually they'll have that. So, so there's your step one, guys. Get your pairs set up. Get your nest box in there. Now, if they don't lay eggs within the first one to two weeks, that's okay. It gives, you know, you got to give them some time to get used to their environment, get used to each other. Uh, zebra finches typically around like the three to four week mark is when I start seeing the eggs, unless they were already paired up previously and already ready to go. So I'm going to, I'm not going to expect eggs from these guys for another at least two weeks. Yeah, and if they come before that, cool. So... So we have these guys here. So we're gonna move on down to this nest, right, or to this cage right here. So this is a black cheek male and female. As you can see, you can't see them in there because they're sitting on the nest. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close my door because I'm gonna pull this nest box off and we're gonna candle the eggs. Oh, there's my male, he just came out. So he's down there, I did give him some egg food, so they're, they're pretty excited eating up on that. And so, um, let me close the door. Hopefully it doesn't get too dark in here for you guys. We'll uh, we'll open it back up after, let you guys see him. So he's got some really cool markings. He's a little bit small, um, but that's okay. I kind of want, I bought him more for the markings and the colorings, not so much for his size. And so really great bird. Have the, my other male and female down there that we just set up. So. Actually, we're going to go to these guys first because these guys are in the next stage. So these guys are in the process of building their nest. So they haven't laid any eggs yet. I just put their nest box in about a week ago. Um, same pair, black cheek male, black cheek female. And you can see that she's missing some feathers on their back. Before I put the nest box in there, they were starting to pluck feathers and, and try and build a nest. And so I hurry and threw their nest box in. We can kind of pull this back. The lid doesn't open on it, on this one. You can't really see in there. Um, this was a nest box that I built a long time ago. Um, and I have to put this rag on top because there's a little gap right here. And if I don't put the rag right there, they can escape. So, you know, just little little things that uh, we got to work around, but it's okay. We you, you work with what you have. So. So they're building their nest. I'm gonna put a little bit more nesting material in here for them. They are starting to sh show signs of that they're gonna lay eggs. The female is spending more time in the nest box. Um, and so that's a good sign that she's either laying eggs or getting ready to lay eggs. One thing, make sure you always have cuddle bone in there avail available for them at all times. Um, they, they really like that. Um, and you can also see I don't know if you can see here on her with the lighting. On the black cheeks, the females have a black cheek as well. So you can see that she has a cheek, but the difference is, is the females, they don't have those black flank markings on their sides or on their breast. And so that's how you can tell your male and females apart for these zebra finches. Regular zebra finches, the hens don't have a cheek patch or flanking marks on their sides. So. So these guys, they're building a nest and I just put nesting material inside on the ground. They grab it, they throw it in. I do have a, a little nesting thing there. They, they keep knocking it off, so I just left it there. I haven't really tried to do anything. So so they're, they're doing that. They're building their nest. And then we go up to these guys who are sitting on eggs. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the nest box off and we're gonna candle them. I haven't candled these eggs yet. And this is my first time breeding these guys. So they've been sitting for probably a week and a half or so. 
So their eggs will be getting close to hatch, so they should be fertile by now. Um, so let's hope that we see some veins in the egg. So what we're gonna do, the female is inside, so I'm just gonna kind of play around with the lid a little bit. There she goes, she just flew out. Where'd she go? There she is, she's right up there. Good looking light gray hen. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna set this phone over here so you guys can see me and we'll bring the nest box over to you. Sorry guys, I don't have a stand. I don't have a stand for my phone yet. So you're gonna have to bear with me on this. All right, so we got our nest box. Right here. You can see they got a lot of cocoa fiber in there. And they've got, if we can get it to focus for you, so you can see four eggs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our flashlight. If I can find it. All right, we got a bunch of bunch of stuff. I need to clean out my inner box. Okay, so we got our flashlight. So we're gonna come in here. So that one looks like it was started. It looks like there was something in there and then it died. So that's not, not fertile, or at least it was fertile at one point. You can see that black dot in there. So it looks like a dead yolk or something. So that one, see how it's kind of got a tint of red? So it's pretty far developed. Um, so that's fertile. You can see that one's good. Let's look at this one, kind of rotate this egg over. So that's kind of a hard angle for you guys to see. You kind of see on that top right, you see a little red vein on there. So that one is fertile. And then our last one here, let's see. This one looks like it was fertile. It might still be fertile. Um, yeah, that one's still fertile. Okay, so you can kind of see that pink tinge there on the bottom. There's some veins that I'm seeing, kind of hard to see on the, on the camera. So we got three out of the four eggs that are fertile. And one thing with zebra finches is these guys generally are fertile most all the time. I haven't had very many times where these guys weren't fertile. Sorry guys, my phone is having the hardest time focusing today, there we go. So you can see they're waiting for their nest to come back. They're wondering what the heck happened. So we're gonna, we're gonna throw the nest box up here real quick again for them and then we'll keep going. All right. Okay, we got the nest box up there. Mel's already checking it, he's already back in. That's how quick, that's how, how easy zebra finches are. They're, they've been domesticated for so long, they'll just go right in. So, here comes the female, she's looking at it, she's getting ready. She might actually come eat some egg food if the male's in there. So, so we have these guys. Obviously, we got four or three out of the four eggs that are fertile here. Those should be hatching probably at the end of next week as they looked a little bit further advanced. So probably about a week to go on these guys and then they'll hatch out. I am excited to see their babies because they have some pretty cool colors here. The male has some really great colors and, and the female is beautiful. So, so we're good there. So that's kind of just a waiting game. And I know lots of times people, if they only have one pair and they're sitting, sitting on eggs, man, those three weeks seem like an eternity. But if you have a lot of birds like this, you know, and all the birds are, birds are in different stages and that sort of thing, kind of makes it fun because it's usually about every week you're having something happening, whether it's eggs being laid, chicks being hatched, chicks fledging, that sort of thing, you know. So that makes it a lot fun, a lot more funner. So, because I can't speak English here. Okay, so we'll go to our last pair here. This is our English zebra finches. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you guys what I do to band the chicks. And you see the males going in there, checking it back and forth. Um, these guys are pretty close to fledge. Um, and so I wanna make sure I get some bands on them 
before they fledge. It's just easier when they're still in the nest. They don't freak out and fly around as much. And so it's easier to, to do it now than waiting after. I usually wait until the birds are almost all feathered before I band them. That's just a preference of mine, um, especially because I use open bands. I don't have to do it when they're young and uh, just a few days old because I don't close bands. So as you can see, my hand, she's the white. She has a black band. And then my male, he has a closed band on his left leg or his right leg. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'm going to do, because I have so many other zebra finches, I'm going to make sure that all of these babies have a black band on their right leg and then a different colored band on their left leg. So all the babies will have two bands. And then I can track that black band back to this pair. And probably what I should do is catch my male and I'll put a black band on his other leg so that I know that the blacks are a pair and all these black banded babies came from them. So when I try and breed in the future next year, I can go back and say, okay, I want to make sure that I don't have any pairs that have black bands. One should have a black band and the other birds should have different colors. And that helps me know that they're not related and I'm not mixing up the genetics. And so that's how I do my banding. Lots of people have different other methods and ways. You have bands that have numbers on them and all sorts of things in the year and the date and stuff like that. Um, and so I don't use that just because the bands that I use are, are cheap bands, to be honest with you, but they work and they work great. You can see I have all my babies in here. They all have bands on them and stuff. And so um, let me show you the bands that I use real quick. So these are the bands. You can see they're with the camera focus. Maybe it's not going to focus. They're just little small bands. And I bought these bands at Walmart in the arts and crafts section. And what they are is they're a bunch of beads, basically. And what I do is I will grab one and I'll stick it on my scissors and I'll cut it in half so that it can open. And then I have a banding tool right here and I can stick the band on the tool and slide it on the chick's leg. And so what we'll do is I'm gonna set the phone down. We're gonna go grab the, the nest box, bring it over. I'll pull the chicks out, show you what I do with the chicks, how I check them, make sure they're healthy and strong, make sure there's no abnormalities. Then I'll throw a band on them, throw them back in the nest box and they'll be good to go. So let me put the phone down. Let me grab the, the nest box. We'll bring it over, show you guys the chicks, what we do to band them and go from there. Hopefully you guys can see that pretty good. Okay, so we got the nest box right here. Okay, so we'll grab it, let you guys see the chicks inside real quick. So come on here. Open up the nest. You can see the chicks are in there. They're getting pretty close to fledging. So we've got four chicks. Parents have done an awesome job at raising them and keeping them fed and warm and ready to go. And so we'll get them in. They actually have some really good size. So I'm excited about that. They're gonna be some big babies here. And we'll kind of Pull one out, we'll show you the banding process and then we'll, we'll end the video. And hopefully I covered most of the basics on breeding these guys and the things that I do to, to breed them and to be successful and that sort of thing. So, so let's grab, we'll grab the biggest chick. He's right here in front. Oh, there he goes. So that's one thing you have to be careful of. See him jumping around out there. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab my net here. Since he's uh, he's pretty, he's he's pretty uh, rambunctious little guy. So we just, we're gonna net him here. Then that gives me an opportunity to, to get a hold of him here. The other chicks, they're, they're not quite as feathered as much. So we got them right here in the nest. So we're just going to grab them real quick. Let's see if we can uh, jump down in there. 
as you can see see from him flying around he's pretty healthy and strong there's our little guy looking good the other guys in there they're hiding thinking what the heck's going on here so he looks good so what we're gonna do is just kind of look at his feet you know we want to make sure his toes and everything are all there we're gonna let me set this down and I'll kind of show you up close okay so we got him really what we want to do is kind of open up his wings make sure his wings look good those look great look at his other side those look good we flip him upside down look at his rear make sure there's no poop smears or anything like that those look good his feet look great no toes are missing, all of his nails are there. He is very rambunctious. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll, we'll get our bands on, we'll get ready to band them here. And I've already cut these ones, so they're ready to go. Okay, so I just slide it on, you can see, oops, when we slide it on here, there's a little opening there, and that's where his leg will, will fit through. So we'll get it like this. You might have to rotate him a little bit here. Got it? There we go. Slid it on. You can see he's got the band on his on his leg. So now I'm gonna get a different colored one. And this colored one is basically what's gonna help us distinguish between these four chicks. Um, who's who? So So we'll get this on. Slide this on him real quick. Like so, got it. You can see right there, he's got his band on, okay? Great chick, good size. I'm gonna put him in there, close the nest box. I don't want him to fly out again, so. So that's the process, that's how we, that's how we band the birds, the chicks. Then we'll, uh, I'll get all of them banded, we'll put them back out here. That's kind of the step by through step. Once the chicks fledge, usually it takes about three weeks for the parents to wean them off. And then I'll separate the chicks and the, the parents will go back to, to breed again. So I give them, when they have eggs or chicks in the nest or chicks that are in the cage, I give them egg food every day, fresh seed, water every day. Zebra finches are pretty simple. They don't need a lot of requirements. And that's that's really what I do in my process for breeding the zebra finches. And so if you guys have any other questions, drop some comments below. Let me know if there's any other specifics that you would like to hear. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching this. Sorry it was a little bit longer video than usual, but I wanted to make sure I, I followed through the process of beginning stages to end stages of these zebra finches and, and let you guys see how cool they really are and, and the, the fun that comes from breeding these guys. So appreciate you watching. Have a good day.